Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's your boy, the hot rodster here, and today I am doing something a little different. A commenter gave me the idea to analyze what Goku's quirk would be if he was in My Hero Academia. I come up with three different character profiles that I think might somewhat resemble what Goku's quirk could be. Since these stories began in the My Hero verse, this character technically is not Goku, but he will be the Goku equivalent of these stories. Without further ado, let's get into the first story. This journey begins with the union of two people, a rehabilitated Goto Imatsuji and a gender-bent Yuga Ayama are joined in holy matrimony. You may be wondering, how did the shining hero change so drastically? Why did muscular change his ways? And why is he not in jail? That really doesn't matter because this story focuses on their child, Goku. When he was five years old, he shot a laser beam out the palm of his hands and he accidentally put a hole in the roof of his house. That is when his parents knew that he had inherited his mother's quirk. But through some mutation, the laser came out of his hands instead of his belly button. Because of this, he doesn't suffer from his mother's weaknesses. Due to having such a versatile quirk, he quickly became very popular. While he loved all the attention he got at school, he still had one huge dream. Like most of the kids in his class, he wanted to be a hero. Not for the money, nor for the fame like most people, but because he just wants to help others. His greatest desire is to prove to himself that he is making the best use of his quirk. That is why he studied multiple different forms of martial arts, such as karate, kung fu, jujitsu, taekwondo, boxing, and even sumo. Goku was blessed with a great quirk, but he was also a genius. He was able to master new techniques after only seeing them once. He mastered all of these martial arts forms within three years. One day, Goku decided to go on this middle school hero retreat. It would be his first chance to be taught by actual heroes, so he couldn't pass it up. But something awful happened during that program. One of the camp instructors was the number three hero, Shoto. He was very impressed with Goku's skills, so he wanted to train him one-on-one. -on -one. Goku, of course, was very grateful for the opportunity to spar against one of the greatest heroes, so he accepted the challenge. But something weird started to happen in that fight. Goku's excitement for battle activated a second quirk. A quirk he was unaware of before this day. A quirk not dissimilar to his father's, but he couldn't control it. He went on a rampage. A muscular boy with lasers was a huge threat so camp counselors decided to evacuate the students. But Goku wouldn't let them escape. He was out for blood. And he would have ended up killing people if Shoto were not there to stop him. It was not an easy battle. Goku was strong enough to break through ice and quick enough to evade his fire. But in the end, after eight hours of continuous battle, Shoto was victorious, but he did break his arm in the process. After this incident, everyone was afraid of Goku. Even his own mother couldn't be around him. Having experienced bloodless tendencies before, his father was really the only person who understood what he was going through. A few weeks later, Shoto came to visit Goku. He made the most unusual request. He wanted Goku to move in with him. Since Shoto had also inherited both quirks from his parents, he felt like he knew what Goku may have been going through. And after seeing his tremendous skills, he wanted to make Goku his protege. He promised to cover up the incident that occurred at the hero retreat and help Goku master his new powers. His mother was very supportive of this idea, while his father didn't want his boy to leave home so soon. The decision was left up to Goku, and he accepted the offer. When it came time for Goku to apply to high schools, he already knew exactly where he wanted to go, UA the famous Hero Academy. And being Shoto's adopted son came with some benefits. He was actually able to get into the school through recommendations, so he didn't have to pass some entrance exam. Going to the best school for heroes and having Shoto in his corner really allowed Goku to live up to his potential. Everything was going well until one day, he came back home only to find Shoto laying on the floor. Goku felt uneasy as he walked over to him. He knew what he would find, but he did not want to accept the reality. He grabbed Shoto's left hand, and it was ice cold. He was dead, no doubts about it. Goku broke down. Shoto had given him a chance to chase his dream, 
and it hurt like hell knowing that he was gone forever. The world had lost a true hero, and Goku had lost his master, adoptive father, and most important of all, a friend. Eventually, he called the police, and they began their investigation. One thing that was clear was that this was no natural death. Reports found that his neck had been squished like a Coke can. It was no question that whomever killed Shoto had a strength-enhancing quirk. Since Goku fit that description, he was taken into the station for questioning and holding. Goku couldn't prove his innocence, but once the police found out about the training camp cover-up, he was just too suspicious. Goku knew he had to prove his innocence before he was transferred to real prison the next day. He had to break out that night. He couldn't just break the wall behind him as it was a load-bearing wall. The window was too small to actually climb out of. His only option was to rip the bars off the cell and make a break for it through the main entrance. Running past the cops was light work for him, but the real challenge came with the hero on duty. Because holding cells contain a bunch of different bad people with quirks, the police aren't expected to be able to prevent a prison break. That is why a hero is usually always on duty defending the prison, and the hero on duty was the number two hero himself, Katsuki Bakugo. Goku was at the top of his class, but he is still a novice. He had never actually beaten Shoto in a serious match, so running into the number two was frightening. And even if he could beat Bakugo, he didn't want to hurt a hero or any of the officers because that would make him an actual criminal, but he had no choice. Before he even had time to say anything, Bakugo pounced on him. He had a very aggressive fighting style that he was not used to dealing with, but Goku being the intelligent student he is, found an opening to blind him with his lasers. He then used his muscular form to run away very far, very quickly. With no way for Bakugo to track him, Goku was finally free. Goku's first thoughts were to head back to his original parents. He thought that maybe his father would know a thing or two about strength enhancers in the area. But when he came back home, he found something very unsightly. Another corpse. And it belonged to his mother. Her pulse was gone, but her body was still warm. This happened recently. There was only one explanation. This was the work of his father, and he must be nearby. Goku heard a rattling noise coming from upstairs. He approached the steps slowly and begun to climb them. Then out of nowhere, his father jumped at him from behind the corner and punched him with full force. Goku's swift instincts helped him block the attack with his muscular form. At this point, Goku was angry. He felt betrayed by his own father, but when he looked him in the eyes, he noticed something. Tears. His father was crying. His father only said seven words to him. I'm sorry, I can't control it. Suddenly, Goku realized what had happened. It was the same for him back at the middle school hero retreat. He lost control, and if he is not stopped, the killing spree will continue. While the battle in the woods took eight hours, this battle didn't last longer than 15 minutes. With his wide array of martial arts skills, he beat the muscle out of his own father. Once his father was back to normal, he was able to explain everything that had happened. One day, Goto Imasuji saw a little girl playing in the street. He was completely oblivious to the car that was coming her way. Determined to save that girl, Imasuji used his muscular form to put himself between the girl and the car. It had been several years since he had used that form and it triggered something inside of him. He was slowly becoming addicted to fighting and killing again. He went to Shoto for help since he was able to help Goku with his problem. But as soon as Shoto opened the door, he instinctively crushed his neck. Horrified by what he had done, he had ran back home. He told his wife everything, and she told him everything would be okay. A few hours later, he found her trying to call the cops. He mistakenly thought she was gonna turn him in, when in reality, she just wanted to ask about her son. The murderous thoughts just got louder in his head, and before he knew it, he killed his wife. After telling Goku the story, he gave him the security camera footage that clearly showed him killing Shoto. He told his son that he would turn himself into the authority soon. He also told his son that he just wanted to spend a little more time in the house with his dead wife, and that Goku should just go on ahead. Little did he know, his father would end up killing himself. After solving the mystery and inheriting Shoto's estate, Goku was given the title, the muscular hero. He vowed that he would never use his abilities to kill. He wants to devote himself to protecting as many people as he can. Goku turned out to be a fine hero. The end. Years after graduating from UA, 
Deku has become the number one hero. He is the pillar that keeps society from crumbling, the symbol of peace that deters villains from committing crimes. He inspires people to go forth and accomplish their dreams, including the current UA student known as Son Goku. Like in the previous story, Goku's parents are Goto Imasuji and Yuga Aoyama, but he only inherited his mother's laser quirk in the palm of his hands. He really wanted to attend UA because he had heard that Deku would actually be teaching there. His parents were not big fans of this decision as they both knew firsthand how much this school got targeted. But Goku decided to go anyway in order to pursue his dream of becoming a hero and for a chance to meet the number one hero. On Goku's first day of class, he found out that his homeroom teacher was none other than Deku. He was very excited because he knew that he had a chance to learn from the very best. This excitement was very short lived as Deku would put Goku through some of the most extreme training he has ever been through. As soon as Deku walked through the door, he said, 100 push ups, 100 sit ups, 100 squats, and a 10k run every day. Everyone laughed as they assumed he was joking, but Deku was dead serious. He told the class that anyone who refused to attempt it would be expelled from the school. He made it clear that they can use their quirk to help them complete this workout. They had less than an hour to do so. Goku was shocked, but he immediately got to work. All of his martial arts training really paid off. While it did take a while, he was able to do the entire thing. Actually, out of everyone in the class, he was the only one to barely just finish. Deku congratulated him, but also told Goku that it was not enough to compete with the number one, as Deku usually did 10 times this routine in the same amount of time without even breaking a sweat. At the end of the first week, Deku took his students to USJ, the unforeseen simulation joint. But as soon as the doors closed, Deku's former rival, Tomura Shigaraki, used the warp gate to appear inside the building. Before anyone would knew what was going on, Deku started to decay. Eventually, there was nothing but a pile of dust. The students began to panic and they started running around like crazy, but Goku was determined. He knew that the only way he would make it out alive is if he fought these guys head on. Seeing Shigaraki's quirk in action, he knew it would be best to keep his distance, so he decided to mostly rely on his lasers. Even when Shigaraki got close, Goku's experience with fighting allowed him to dodge and evade all of his attacks. Shigaraki was completely outmatched. Goku landed a final blow on him, but suddenly realized that this Shigaraki was a machine. Instead of blood and guts, metal parts were just flying everywhere. Deku then appeared out of nowhere and told Goku that he had passed the test. He told the class that this entire scenario was prepared right from the start and it was based on a real villain attack that happened when he was a high schooler. The point of this exercise was to see how the students would react under crisis. It was obvious that most of them had a lot of training left to do. As all of the students headed back home for the day, Deku asked Goku if he could just hang back for a bit. He told Goku that he was very proud of him and that he wants Goku to succeed him as the next symbol of peace. He tells Goku about One For All and how All Might pass down this quirk to him. Now he wants Goku to take on the mantle. Deku has wanted to retire for a while now. He has a wife and a kid and another one on the way. He wanted to spend as much time with his family as possible, but he also didn't want to neglect his duties to the world. Goku humbly accepted his offer. He was a little disgusted that he had to eat some of Deku's hair, but he was impressed with the results. Unlike Deku, Goku didn't have any problems using 100% of One For All right from the start. He was a natural, just like All Might. Because of this, Goku decided to take the name All Might as a tribute to the number one hero before Deku. Goku lived the rest of his life doing what he loved most, protecting people and fighting strong villains. And Deku finally got to retire and be with his family. Life just really worked out for these two. The end. The son of the martial arts hero, Tailman. Goku's entire life had been lived in his father's shadow. While he was basic, his father was known far and wide as a great hero. But the most embarrassing thing about having to live in his father's shadow is knowing that he will never be able to live up to his name, especially since his tail was embarrassingly small compared to his father's. His dad tried to tell him that it's not the size of the tail that mattered, 
but rather how he used it. He gave Goku some martial arts training in hopes that he could overcome his securities. However, oftentimes, Goku wished he was never born, or at the very least, that he wouldn't constantly be compared to his father. One day, Goku ran into a strange man who told him that he could help Goku become more famous than his father and that he doesn't have to be part of his father's legacy. It was a tempting offer, but he refused because it sounded too good to be true. And this guy looked very sketchy. The man backed off, but he gave Goku his phone number and told him to call him if he ever changed his mind. Later that night, Goku was sleeping peacefully, and he was dreaming about what it would mean to be freed from his father's legacy. He no longer had so much pressure on him, and he was finally happy. This brief happiness motivated Goku to call the mysterious man and ask him for his help the next day. Goku asked the man how he could remove his father's legacy. Suddenly, without hesitation, the man grabbed Goku's face. A sharp pain flowed through Goku's body, and once the pain was gone, the man let go of his face. What did you do to me? Goku asked. That is when he realized that his tail was gone. The embarrassing tail that can never live up to his father's was gone forever. The man explained to Goku that he is all for one, and he has the ability to take and give away quirks. He then told Goku that he gave him a muscle enhancing quirk that would make him strong enough to even injure the mighty Deku. All for one then decided to make Goku a deal. If he killed his own father, he would prove his loyalty and all for one would give Goku another quirk. Goku has always wanted to escape his father's legacy. Killing Tailman may just erase the image of this hero, so Goku accepted the deal. Later that night, Goku snuck into his father's room. He planned to strangle him to death with his new powers, but when he checked his bed, he only found a dummy that looked like his father. Out from the shadows, his father jumped on his son and asked him what he was doing. Using his new powers, Goku was able to push him off. Tailman was shocked by this new ability and was a little disoriented. That allowed Goku to punch a hole straight through his chest. Goku will never forget his father's final words, no matter what path you go down, no matter who you decide to become, just know that I will always love you. Goku felt bad about what he did, but at the same time, he also felt a little more at peace because he had officially destroyed his father's legacy. All for One showed up and congratulated Goku on his victory. He then gave him a quirk called Impact Recoil. This quirk allowed the user to reverse the impact coming in from a strong force, which would damage the attacker instead. It doesn't completely cancel out the damage, but it does get significantly reduced. All for One then decided to offer Goku another deal. If he was able to kill the top three heroes, Shoto, Bakugo, and Deku, he would give him more quirks. Having already started walking down this destructive path, he decided that killing three more people wouldn't be a big deal. In order to get the attention of these heroes, Goku placed the severed head of his father at Shoto's doorstep and the severed tail at Bakugo's doorstep. He wrote them both threatening letters demanding that they meet him alone. If they didn't show up alone, he promised he would start killing people who were close to them. They had different meeting times, so Goku was prepared to take these guys one on one. He first met with Shoto, and Shoto recognized Goku as Tailman's son. He was distraught that he would do such a thing to his loving father, but he also knew that Goku was a monster that must be stopped. Goku was able to use his strength to break through all of Shoto's ice attacks, and his impact recoil came in handy with some of his fire attacks. Shoto wasn't expecting Goku to have multiple quirks, and that caught him off guard. That was a fatal mistake, and it ended in his death. Before his next battle, All For One showed up to give Goku a new quirk as promised. He supplied him with both Air Cannon and Air Walk. They're both pretty self-explanatory. With Air Cannon, Goku can create air shockwaves with his arms. And with Air Walk, Goku can now fly. Bakugo showed up pissed as hell. He didn't care that Goku was the son of Tailman. To Bakugo, he was just the killer of his former classmate. Bakugo came at Goku with the intent to murder him. But Goku's martial arts training allowed him to predict, dodge, and parry a lot of his attacks. Bakugo decided that it may be best for him to keep his distance, so he used his explosions to stay in the air. He was unaware of Goku's new flight abilities and his long-range cannon. He blew Bakugo out of the air and killed him easily when he got back on the ground. All for One showed up once more and told Goku he was proud of him. 
He gave him a quirk called Search, which allowed him to monitor up to 100 people at the same time. That includes knowing their locations and weak points. He also gave Goku a Dark Gi as a symbol of his loyalty. Now Goku was feeling pretty unstoppable, so he decided to pay the number one hero a visit, Deku. Goku brought the corpses of the number two and number three hero directly to Deku's house. Very infuriated, Deku attacked Goku. Even with all of his new quirks, Goku found this battle to be quite difficult, probably because Deku also had multiple quirks up his sleeve. But right when things were looking rough for Goku, All For One appeared and killed Deku himself. He then told Goku that he was the only person who was actually able to push Deku to his limits. If Deku wasn't so distracted, he never would have been able to pull it off. And with that, All For One gave Goku one more quirk that allowed him to teleport wherever he wanted. News of the deaths of the three heroes spread very quickly, and of course, Goku took credit for it. No one even remembered that he was the great tail man's son. They just knew him as the one who murdered the top heroes. He's the right hand of the most evil man in the world, and he is finally free of his father's shadow. He has finally found peace. The end. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.